Welcome to Project Pack number 12, day 10. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria again. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, we're, back. Uh, we're going to do another moon pie, um, crescent moon pie, just to show you how a tangle can look so different from one tile mm -hmm. to the other. So we're going to use a, uh, the, the, one of the three Zs and a brown pen and start out by uh, not making a crescent, but more of a, uh, what you call that shape? Well, that's sort of like a f one of my fluxes. It does look like sort right? of one of your fluxes. But it's like a teardrop, upside mm -hmm. down teardrop. And we're going to uh, aura them like in a tethered aura, right. which is totally different than the last time. And then we're gonna grab the um, black Micron 01 and do the little uh, crescent moon, not no, uh, Knight's Bridge. And um, just take our time going around each one. This is so much fun to just take our time. And you can see mine are a little wonky, but the, the wonkiness really adds to it. You know, if they're too exact, I think it's, it's expected. Well, and it also doesn't look natural. Like I challenge anyone to go out and like find a maple tree in the fall, and there's lots of leaves around, and find out of the hundreds of thousands or millions of leaves, two that are exactly the same. So I added a little bit of black um, inside where that brown uh, teardrop shape is, and we're doing another tethered um, aura. aura. And around that, again, with the, uh, the orbs. And then we're going inside the orbs and putting a black pearl inside. And that is the whole tile. <laughs> right. In a nutshell, right? And so we're going we're gonna to walk through this. And what if you haven't seen already day eight, which also has a similar series of steps, it's fun to go back and look at that same series and see how different you can make the same simple strokes and create a different pattern. So this, this is a, a really good exercise of ways to explore what you can do with the same color of pattern. Yeah. So we're just doing moon pies on here. Right. That's all it is. So it would be a monotangle of, of enormous proportions <laughs> right. on a little tile. <laughs> and there's also an integration, if you will, of the, uh, the type of the way, this t the way these elements are going together is very much like poke root. So there's that feeling of one growing out of the other, right? Right, right, right. You're exactly right. You can see I'm, I'm sort of touching up inside and adding something darker there. It's subtle, but uh, I can see it on the tiles. You know, yeah. when you have them in front of you, you'll see. And you can go back over the, the brown and restate those lines with the black. Just gives it a little bit more edge to it. I love the consistent imprecision of the orbs. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons we call them orbs instead of circles, because circle to us has that sense of, you know, perfect, you know, Use like a drawn compass, with yeah. a compass and a radius. And the orb, the idea of orb is, is much more, it's circle-ish. Yeah, you don't want to get too much further ahead and, and maybe watch uh, where I go with this at this point. So, so yeah. I, I'm adding uh, a couple of more, but I want to leave that top edge open. This is a brand. 
and just watching uh, as I watch Maria doing this, I get the sense of, okay, she's figuring out in real time, like, okay, where do I put the next one? And the point of that is, as you're doing the one that you're doing, just focus on that. Don't be thinking about, or you don't need to be thinking about where the next one is going to go, because when you get there, it's usually very self-evident, and you're going to have that sense and know okay, I'm going to put this one here, and oh, that's got a little space there. So you can see I just sort of went beyond the, 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 the formula there, right. but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Well, the orb sort of uh, enveloped that line anyway. Mm -hmm. So I put another one over on the other side. And then we've got those. I love those orbs that fill in there. Right. It's almost like a, um, a, f a paisley pattern, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. So I'm going in and putting in some graphite at the uh, base of these uh, teardrops. This would be interesting to do, like... Uh, do with flux in general to have like an aura around each flux. I'm mm, just gonna try I never that. thought of that, yeah. Right? So with the white chalk, I'm going to go in and add pretty aggressively um, where the uh, checkerboard is and the, that aura just to uh, bring some uh, contrast in there. And it's also softening the colors a little bit. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, like taking the contrast out just a little bit. Almost makes it satiny. Yeah, right? yeah. Like a satin. Yeah, like reflecting some light. Well, I could see. I I don't know why I'm doing that. I uh, think you're filling in underneath that other one there. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing that. But, like so, I said, so it's so complex. So let that be, so an, inspira <laughs> let that so be an inspiration <laughs> to you to, as you're going... You don't need a specific reason to say, you know, I really want just a little bit of overflow of something. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I had a very good reason for it. Yes. It's actually a really good example. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. I like how that lightens it up. Hold it, hold it out at arm's length and you can see the satiny effect. Mm. And the whole um, point of doing this is that we're hoping that you're going to do two more of these. Right. And um, I will demonstrate that in a second here. And remember, you can always go back in with uh, shading, with highlighting. Uh, there's a lot of layering possibilities. Nice. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> right? right. So let's get some of that gold yeah, going. I'm going to... Re reconstitute right. <clears throat> with a little water and uh, fill in the background here at the top with the gold. Wouldn't that pretty, huh? Mm. And this is a very uh, fairly thick mix with the gold. Not not much water here. Yeah. Looks like a medium. Well, that's part of the the charm of this is you you can have all different. Uh, thicknesses of the gold. This was one of my favorite ones. I love this. So simple. Mm. Really sets it off. Mm -hmm. oh, it makes it very elegant. Like mm -hmm. it's a part of a dress or something. You know, oh, elegance. So you can see here how it kind of goes together with the other two. So all of them started at one of the corners right. of the triangle there. How pretty, right? So y you can leave it like that or just keep it as three pieces or we can uh, put it together to form a three-dimensional piece and, uh, you know, it might end up on, on, on a, a table, tree on or a on tree. a table right. or uh, next to a candle or, you know, I'm just going to show you roughly how you can put it together. I had blue tape, you know, on me, but you probably wouldn't use that. But I just oh, wanted you whatever. to be able to see what I was doing. So you figure out, you know, which corner goes to which corner. 
is what she did the first time. And then the next one. So these tiles, these three and a half inch, the triangle tiles are made to fit the same edge of the square tiles as well. So you can play around making all sorts of uh, geometric shapes with both square and triangle. There you go. I'm sure you're going to do a better job with the tape than, <laughs> than I did. But it was, it's a beautiful three-dimensional piece. Or it, it lays flat nicely, too. Or if you had three more, you could do like a whole circle. A whole circle. Them, right? Oh, that would be lovely. Well, thanks again for playing along with us, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye now.